Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sade and I like to do as much as I possibly can DIY. And today we are gonna be upcycling these IKEA mom drawers. Now IKEA furniture, people find it quite tricky to upcycle because it's not pure wood in most cases. It's actually usually MDF or chipboard covered in melamine. So it's like a veneer finish, which can be difficult to try and get paint to stick to. I'm gonna try and show you how I do it today, the tips that I've learned from painting previous IKEA furniture, and I'm gonna show you everything you need to do this so first things first when it comes to any sort of furniture preparation is key you've probably heard that loads and wondered well what is the preparation it's actually really simple if you just have some patience <laughs> take your time this should be the only time that you need to paint your furniture and it should have a really professional finish first thing that you need to do is to prepare the surface if your piece has got loads of grease grime dirt whatever built up on it you need to strip that off first and I don't mean a paint stripper I mean you just need to use some sugar soap or you can use any sort of degree or cleaner that you've got in the house just to make sure that it is grime free. In terms of preparation for a piece like this, because it is made of melamine, which is actually quite a delicate substance, you wanna make sure that you're not using a sandpaper to rip through to the underneath of that veneer. We wanna make sure that we're keeping the veneer on top, but we're just taking off a very, very light topping of it just to give the paint something to grip to. In the initial instance, you wanna go in with a 180 grit, probably nothing less than this, just a 180 just to give it a once over and you don't need to sand it down loads a couple when I say a couple one or two passes along each section is absolutely fine later on when we're sanding in between coats we'll go in with a very fine grit paper which is two, 220 240 whatever you can get your hands on a lot of paints these days actually have primers and top coats built in the one that I'm going to use actually does as well but if you want to and if you want to be extra cautious cautious careful and cautious if you want to be extra careful you can use a primer underneath to make sure that that paint actually bonds to the surface you want it to bond to then you're going to want to go in with your actual paint which may be your top coat as well as I say a lot of them have got finishing coats built into them these days I'm going to go in with the Valspar furniture paint which comes in a dead matte finish I cannot wait to show you what this looks like when we get to the end of this project so I'm just attaching my 180 grit sandpaper and I'm using my works detail sander this is great because it's got a little bag to catch the excess dust and it is battery operated so I don't have to worry about any wires tripping me up please use the right PPE to protect your eyes ears and lungs and if you're working indoors open up a window so now what I'm going to do is sugar soap it to get rid of all of the dust and then I'm going to leave it for maybe another half an hour let the dust settle again because there's going to be loads of dust in the room let it settle and then wipe them down again so the next stage for me is actually one that you may not end up doing it's something that you can totally skip if you like the design of your drawers already these ones are a little bit plain so in order to jazz them up a little bit I've just got some molding you can go with any kind you like I've got a full ridged molding and I'm going to be gluing that across the edges but to make sure that it looks really professional and almost looks like it was built in when we got the drawers I'm going to be mitering the corners which is just a really fancy term for saying that I'm going to cut the corners at a 45 degree angle so that they all fit into a perfect box with that kind of like diagonal corner edging. Super simple if you don't have an electric miter saw. I've just got a miter box which I picked up from Wix for about £6 and it has loads of different angles including 22 and a half, 90 and then we've got the 45 degrees which we'll use today. I've then got a tenon saw. A tenon saw is really helpful because it allows you to create fine cuts in soft woods. Then you'll need some wood glue. This is really 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 strong so just be careful using it but it is going to bond that wood to those drawers forever. After sawing, you may realise that the edges of the wood are a little bit rough, so I've just got this sanding block. I get these from B&M and places like that where they're super cheap. I'll link some down below as well. And this is just 180, so it's super fine and it's just going to take off those rough edges for us. Wood glue is going to be your best option to secure down this beading to the existing drawer. I've just added a copious amount, smoothed it all out using a scrap piece of paper and then I'm putting all of my angles in place before it dries through. I'm then using a staple gun just to make sure that they're held in place because I forgot my clamps at home, I only had a couple of them. So I just used a couple of tacks to keep them in place but if you've got grips or clamps you can equally use those to keep them in place whilst they dry too.
You're likely to have excess wood glue once it's all dried, so I'm just using that same sand block to take all of that off so it's nice and smooth. I then wipe down with a damp cloth just to pick up any excess dust. So I've done this in a little bit of a backwards order, but it doesn't matter too much. You're gonna wanna caulk between the trim and the drawer front before you paint. The reason I did it this way was because I was under time constraints to get the first coat of paint down. Remember, you're gonna want your first layer of coat to be your primer. However, mine has got a primer and a finishing coat built in, which is why I've just gone in with my color. The biggest question I got on my Instagram the other day when I was doing this was, how can I get smooth coats of paint? How can I get paint to not chip in the future? I cannot stress to you enough, you need to use thin coats of paint. Thick coats of paint are gonna be much more susceptible to chipping and damage. You almost want to dry brush this. So you're gonna to wanna to take off all that excess paint on the roller or the brush, and you're gonna to wanna to spread the paint as far as you possibly can before topping up. Use a good quality brush and roller. Don't skimp out and just get the cheap stuff. Also leave it the amount of time it needs to cure. Can you see the first coat? Looks really, really good in person. Pretty much all we're gonna do now is we're gonna go in with a sander, about 220, really lightly, just dust over the top of it, over each section, and then we can apply a new paint coat. It takes between two to four hours to dry, so I'm gonna crack on with that now, and then after four hours, I'm gonna do the final coat and let it dry, and then that'll be done for today. These will be finished. I'm a little bit of a doofus, and I forgot that I need to cork through the edges where I've laid that new molding, so I'm just gonna do that quickly, and it should take like an hour max to dry or something. Yeah, so I can paint over it an hour, so I'll start doing something else, and then come back to that. So caulking isn't an absolutely necessary step, but if you want a much more professional and smooth looking finish, then you are gonna to want to caulk. It just creates a smoother bond between the trim and the drawer fronts, and it will make it look like they weren't DIY'd as such. I find using caulk actually quite difficult sometimes. It's hard to get it smooth, but a little tip is to use about three parts fairy liquid and one part water, along with either your finger or a microfiber cloth, and you're just gonna use that to create a much more professional smooth look. So I know it's quite boring watching someone sand something down, but I thought I'd include this footage just to explain why sanding between coats of paint is actually quite important. If you skip this step, it's probably not gonna be the end of the world, but you probably are more likely to have a less smooth finish at the end, which isn't what we want. Whereas if you sand down in between, you're gonna end up keying the paint, which creates a better surface for the new layer of paint to bond with the previous layer of paint. And it basically gives longevity to the piece. I've bought three of these, wow. So all I need to do is drill some holes just to align these. I've put the drawers in. I didn't wanna put these on the drawers outside of the unit, then come to find that the unit wasn't quite square so the handles looked off. So if you're gonna do this, put all your drawer fronts back in and then you can square up and put your handles on. The process of putting handles on the drawers is a little bit hard to explain, so you may wanna watch this back a couple of times so that you understand. Using masking tape, estimate where your handles will be and put another piece in the middle. Find the vertical midpoint across all three masking tape pieces. And then you're gonna to wanna to find the horizontal mid piece. So this is the dead center of the drawer. Now we're gonna to wanna to find where we're gonna drill our holes from that midpoint to the left and to the right. You can find the number that you need from that midpoint left and right by taking the distance between both of the holes on the handle and dividing it by two. Step back, eyeball it, use a level, whatever you need to do to make sure that it is straight. Using the cross points that you've just created, drill a hole using a corresponding drill bit to the screw that you'll be attaching the handles with, peel off the masking tape and attach your handles. You can use the same process to attach the next two sets of handles, but if you're like me and you worry about keeping things square, then this laser level is perfect. It glows red when it's not level and green when it is level, so I just used it for those vertical pieces just to make sure that I had all of the handles perfectly square. Mm -hmm. 
just a little reminder as to what the mom drawers looked beforehand. I am certain that a handful of you watching this video definitely have these at home and I've already seen people over on my Instagram remaking these so I am so excited to show you the full reveal. I don't know what it is about upcycling but it just makes me so happy to like the core of my heart upcycling old treasures making them new treasures something like this looks like we could have bought it out of a magazine or a high-end retailer but we saved ourselves so much money just by me painting it and giving it a new lease of life i hope this video put into perspective for you just how easy it is to create bespoke pieces for your own home and how easy a project like this could be but that's it from me guys i really hope that you enjoyed this video don't forget to like the video leave me a comment subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed if you've been lurking and you've watched at least two videos why are you not subscribing you clearly like what you see subscribe <laughs> and then hit the notification bell button as well so that you never miss an upload when i put a new video up there's loads and loads of videos like this coming i'm in the middle of a whole room of renovation so you're going to get lots of content if you're into diy videos anything to do with home little crafty bits as well all on my channel but i'll leave it on that note i will see you in the next video take care guys bye Mwah.